Let us now finally admit that lifecycle hooks never were a good design idea. The lifecycle hooks were essential in Angular to track the component creation, the changes of inputs, when the view children or content children appear, you wanted to, to perform some actions, or when you wanted to clean up the component and subscription. But starting with new Angular 16 and 17, you can use the new signal-based API to completely replace the previously used lifecycle hooks. You can use API like signal, effect, computed, and after render, and it it lets you do same things, but just more declaratively and with better code organization. And now let us go through all lifecycle hooks one by one and see how we can replace them with the new APIs. And let us first start with the trickiest ones, and these are ng do check and ng on changes. I remember in my experience I had a project was to build a calendar which looked somewhat similar to a normal iOS calendar and it was heavily based on SVG blocks which were created and rendered manually. This was created in the following way that we had to create a chart in the ng on init and every time when input data changes we could access it in the ng on changes and update the chart there. And we also had to implement the ng do check in order to decide when to trigger the change detection for the elements that are running inside the Angular change detection cycle. And with the new signal API, all this is not necessary because you can use the input signal and within an effect you can initialize the chart and every time when the data changes the same effect will run again and you can also update the data of the chart. Now moving on to the most popular lifecycle hook of Angular, ng on init. And let us start with the most popular lifecycle hook, ng on init. And traditionally, you would use it in order to access the inputs because this is the only place where it's guaranteed that inputs are already initialized. For example, if you would want to compute a value out of your inputs or you would want to prefill a form, you would use ng on init for this. However, with the new Signal API, there is a better way for this and with signals you should use the input function and if you want to compute a value out of your inputs, you can use a computed function. Which means that the full name in this example will always have the latest value if the first name or last name changes. Or if you want to do some side effects, you need to implement an effect inside a constructor. For example, if you want to prefill a form, you should add this to an effect. It means that effect will be called when the component is created and every time when the input signal changes, the effect will be executed again. Now that we have covered ng on in it, let us take a look at the second most popular hook, ng on destroy, which can be completely eliminated. If you are subscribing to an observable inside a component, you need to unsubscribe from it because if you don't do this, it will kept alive and will continue emitting values. In an old way, one of the methods to unsubscribe from an unobservable is to create an unsubscribe subject, which you will have to complete inside ng on destroy. And when you are subscribing to an observable, don't forget the take until operator and pass the subject that you're going to complete in the ng on destroy. So this observable will be kept alive until you complete it in, in the ng on destroy. And there is a new way with the destroy ref which you can inject in your component and pass it into the take until destroyed operator. So the destroy ref itself has the ng on destroy hook and you don't have to implement it in the component anymore. And there is an even better and shorter way by using the to signal method, which converts an observable to signal and you don't have to unsubscribe because it's also destroyed when the component disappears. As next, let's move on to the ng after view in it, after content in it and after checked hooks. So in order to get the view children or content children when they're initialized, you had to implement the ng after view in it and ng after content in it. Or if you wanted to perform some operations after the change detector finished checking the component's view or component's content children, you would have to implement ng after view checked or ng after content checked. And this has got much simpler with the new signal API. In fact, you can initialize view children and content children as signals and they will get accessible in the effect if you want to access them when they are ready. And there is also the after next render function which will run after the initial render if you want to perform some logic only once. Or if you want to run the logic every time when the application has rendered, you have to implement the after render effect. That's it for this quick look into writing Angular components without lifecycle hooks. And if you found this helpful, hit a like, subscribe to my channel and Thank you for watching.